Welcome back to the Vet SOS podcast brought to you by the Who You Know Network. We are now proud members and glad to be supported by the Parade Deck community, a great community of podcasters and uh, change makers. Wonderful things going on there. Make sure you check them out. And of course, as always, remember, don't drown to see a transition. Grab the Vet SOS lifeline. Today, we have John Ellis with us today. We'll be talking transition and all about his new mission that is going to help our community so much. Can't wait to get into this. As always, I'm here with co-host Eric Brew. Eric, how are you doing today? Dude, I'm pumped up, man. This is a, this is a good one for me, dude. I'm excited about this interview. Um, I met John uh, a couple of months ago through Veterati. Uh, John reached nice. out to me and wanted to talk about nonprofit stuff and and things like that. So we've had a couple of great conversations. Um, but I got really excited when uh, we had a, a cancellation, and, and I was able to ask John if he could jump in. And uh, like a true rock star, he was abs- he said absolutely. So um, we wanted to give him a, give him an opportunity to talk about what he's doing, what Mission Rehab is. Um, because he's in a unique area, right, with a unique challenge, and I think um, I think this is an important thing. So I am pumped up, dude. I've had I think I'm up to like four or five cups of coffee. I'm getting ready for the Michigan game. Like this is it's it's a day, dude. Like this it's all about it's all about it. But um, let's get after it, dude. Pitter patter. Let's get at her. Oh my goodness! <laughs> you can't be saying stuff like that. Why? All right, so let's jump into the intro here. The bio: John Ellis is the founder and CEO of Mission Rehab. John served four years in the Army as a food service specialist. After leaving the Army, John has worked in the food and beverage industry primarily. Uh, Now he has started Mission Rehab, and we will get into that shortly about what that looks like. Uh, So, John, how are you doing today? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, I I would just say, you know, quick correction on Eric there. Uh, It's actually only been a couple weeks, not months. So (laughs) It feels like it's been longer. How's that? Yeah. We've no, crammed a lot into a couple of weeks, dude. I'm proud of us. Right. <laughs> so, but yeah, through Veterati and everything. Um, yeah, it's, it, it's insane. The connections that you can get through other veteran organizations and everything, you know, just see, seeking mentorship and all that. So, uh, yeah, just like Eric, you know, he's on his, I think he said what, fourth, fourth cup of coffee. I'm on my third Mountain Dew. So let's get it. Go. <laughs> Sean, you better catch up, buddy. I'm all hopped up on Mountain Dew. <laughs> all right. So, uh, <laughs> um, first of all, John, congratulations on using Veterati. We tell people all the time yeah. that that is one of those resources you have to use. And this is proof of why. I mean, exactly. You, you, you meet people, you learn from them. You know, it's a great tool. So, definitely love hearing the fact that that's how you guys connect it. So, uh, tell us a little bit about your service and your transition piece. So, how how did you know how did your service go, and how was the actual transition out of the military? Well, so I, I say that my service itself was uneventful. Um, you know, I was a cook, but Very in important. Afghanistan, you know, <laughs> I like to eat. <laughs> yeah, in, in Afghanistan, you know, everybody's infantry first. Uh, so I. I during my deployment, I did, uh, you know, working in the motor pool, uh, tower guard, doing convoys. Uh, day one, you know, boots on the ground. They said, go to the armory and, you know, grab what you want. And I'm like, no restrictions. Nah, grab, grab what you want. So I walked in and I'm walking out like, like Rambo, you know, not realizing I have to carry all this stuff. <laughs> Uh, so sign out three machine guns, put all the fancy toys on it and everything. And, you know, then the, my first convoy dismounting the truck, I sprained my ankle. <laughs> so because you were so, carrying so much, <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of, uh, the unfortunate highlight there. Uh, I, I joke and say you're not a real vet unless you got, you know, a divorce, bad credit, and DD 214. I've got all three by the time I was 21. Uh, here it is 12 years later. Uh, finally got, I'm finally back on the right track, you know, uh, happily single. So the divorce isn't going to be a problem anymore. Uh, still got the 214 and, uh, fixing my credit. So, uh, so yeah. I mean, that's kind of my story there. <laughs> it's a journey, right? 
Yeah, absolutely. Dude, transition is not an event, man. It's a journey, and we've all got to walk it. You know, Sean and I talk about this all the time. When you separate from the military, like, you stop being like everyone else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? You have your own journey to walk. You have your own things to go through. Life is still going to life you right in the face. Like, there's, there's no getting around that. So you've got to navigate it yourself, dude. And I'm telling you, listen, in the, in the, in the short couple of weeks, now that we've got that straight, that we've <laughs> known each other, dude, I'm going to tell you, I don't know if anybody's told you this yet or not, John, but I'm proud of you, bro. Like you. <laughs> you, you've put a lot of work into getting to where you're at today. And now that has all translated, right? All of this work you've put in to your transition story, to what you're doing, to, to, to how you're trying to rebuild the things in your life for you personally, all of that is, is, is kind of like cultivated and, and grown into this idea that you want to help other people. Yeah. And I think that speaks to a true character of yours. I think it speaks to, I, I'm sorry, just like what we do, like the, the us, the, the us veterans of the world, right? That life of service. Um, but I think you are, and I've said this before on other episodes, like you are, you are working to be the hands and feet. You're not just a mouthpiece. You're not just talking. You don't just, you know, stand there and point at a TV and say, yeah, like you're actually doing something. And I want to talk about what you're doing because I think it's incredibly important. Right. So mission rehab. All right. First of all, where are you in the world? When then what is mission rehab? Let's start there. All right. So where I'm at is uh, Aberdeen, South Dakota. So if you look at a rectangle, I'm about right here. <laughs> See, that's why we like being from Michigan. I can just go like this. Yeah. There uh, we go. I, I love the the Midwest, you know, maps, you know, you got your finger for here's South Dakota, here's North Dakota, you know, you got Michigan, Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah, there you go. The, All the, right, uh, so you're from the, Aberdeen? Yep. Uh, well, not from, but uh, that's where I'm located now. Okay. Uh, basically, what we're trying to do is we want to offer veterans services through job placement, skill building, homeless prevention. That's going to be our three main pillars because I figure if we focus on skill building, I can get anybody good enough in a kitchen to be a line cook personally. Um, I, I, I know somebody who, who can teach construction, get you good enough to be the gopher, you know, at least get you a job. Uh, then with the job placement, you know, once you have the skill, I want to branch into like having building a network of local employers so that we can actually directly place veterans. Um, it, is not, it may not be the most glamorous position, but it gets you back to a sense of normalcy from being homeless, from being at risk, things like that. Uh, if if we have somebody who is, you know, simply just struggling to make ends meet, you know, we want to be able to offer like a little bit of a lifeline, you know, Hey, don't worry about rent this month. We got you, you know, go, go get your kid that birthday present, that Christmas present, you know, uh, you know, go have a nice dinner, you know, so, something right. like that. And, and just that little bit of a morale boost is, you know, insane what it can do. Yep. Uh, yeah. So yeah. I love that. I think, you know, there's, there's a lot of organizations out there, John, that are doing these big sweeping things. Right. And he's got these huge umbrellas and they're great. Don't get me wrong. That's not a dig at all, but I think it's super important. What I love about what your mission is and what your, what your vision is, is that it's not this big, massive overarching thing, right? It's a local community thing. You want to affect your local community. It's, um, recognizing that it's a step in the process you just want to be a step in the process yeah right you want to be something that's there it's real it's tangible um i think the hardest thing any of us ever have to do as veterans is ask for any kind of assistance and then when we don't know where it is and we don't know what to do with it we don't know who it is it gets even more daunting it gets even more terrifying and i think that's where we find a lot of our veterans in that position right in that homeless or, or at risk position um i love it I love your heart for this dude. Um, I love I love watching you grow this thing. Like this is a lot of fun for me personally. So I'm going to be a little selfish just for a second. Like it's a, it's a lot of fun for me to sit back and kind of watch you navigate what this is going to look like. Um, 
we know what it is. We know what you want to do. What's the why behind it? So COVID, you know, uh, I had a great job. Uh, I was working for a bank. COVID happened. Um, I wasn't ready to, to transition to work from home. So ended up losing my job because of that. Uh, then it got to a point of I was literally doing 60 job applications a week for almost a full year where I was uh, up in North Dakota, um, which, you know, really isn't that much different than South Dakota. It's just <laughs> basically the same, just nicer weather. <laughs> it's uh, just Dakota. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so I was doing 60 applications a week and everything. I, I couldn't even get an interview. When I did get an interview, the second I said veteran, I wasn't qualified not to wash dishes, not to Ooh. do customer service. Uh, the second you say veteran where I was, it, it meant that you're not qualified or it meant that you were overqualified. So every month I give myself a yes month. All right. It's just, it's good for mental health. You know, every opportunity I just simply say yes to. Um, I, I take away all the contingencies so it's not yes, but it's simply yes. In April, no, March uh, was my yes month last year. And an opportunity came up with Wounded Warrior Project of the Services CEO program uh, with the Rosie Network. Mm. And so- Two great I, organizations, yeah. Yeah, and I mean, it, it, they've, been, they've been paramount to me starting this and everything, so. In March, I did an interview for being part of the Wounded Warrior Project cohort. And, you know, they basically asked, they're like, well, what's the organization? What are you trying to do? And, you know, uh, I just spoke out of passion. I'm like, here's what I need. You know, I, I need rental assistance. I can't find a job to save my life. You know, I've got a kid. I've got service dog with cancer. I've got another dog I'm training. And... That's that's how Mission Rehab formed. Uh, it originally was an acronym that was too crazy to put together. Uh, reduce everyone's homelessness with affiliated businesses. That, that was the mission. Affiliate businesses reduce homelessness. <laughs> so, I mean, that that's where it comes from. And then, you know, it ultimately is what I needed. Mm. And what my board members, uh, we're all, we've all been in the same position. So we each bring that unique perspective of this would have helped me at this time. This could have helped at this time. Yep. And I mean, that, that really keeps the, the motivation and the passion, you know, we're doing it because with every vet that we connect with, we see ourselves, you know, one way or another, you know, we, we could speak with, you know, with an Adam coffee and that may not have been us in the past, but we want that to be our future, you know, be multi-successful, <laughs> you know, that's us in five years, 10 years. Right. <laughs> you know, that, that's the first bet that we pick up off the street. That's the 20th bet we pick up off the street, you know, the future Adam coffee. Uh, <laughs> so that, that's, that's ultimately the why. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like there's a there's a personal story in there. Yeah, right? uh, <laughs> I think I think that I think that when we let when we let our our story can do one of two things, right? It can either be a testimony or it can be a tragedy, right? And I think seeing people like you who have chosen to make a testimony, who are making, who are saying, no, 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 I'm going to be here. I'm going to make the. I'm, Dude, you said it so beautifully. This would have been great if then. Yeah. <laughs> this would have been so helpful if then. So then what happens tomorrow, right? Your, your tomorrow, right? Tomorrow looks different now because of Mission Rehab. Tomorrow looks different now because of John Ellis. And I think that's, that's the thing that, that is so powerful about small grassroots organizations who are coming up and trying to do something with their community. Sean, you were getting ready to say something. I'm sorry, buddy. 
I don't remember. Okay. That's <laughs> I haven't had enough old. coffee. That happens. <laughs> that happens. Uh, right. Well, I, I, I would would like to thank you for one being vulnerable and sharing you know part of your your journey and your story, John, because that's that's powerful and in those types of things a lot of our audience can relate to our community Correct. can relate to, uh, and it shows that you know with with some tenacity and some support, you know you can continue to take those steps forward. And um, uh, I remember what it was; it was re reiterating what you said that this is a journey and, and was starting this company, like you said, it could be the first one. It could be the 20th one um, that you, that you help up, you know, it is a journey and, you know, every little step is just going to be huge along the way here. Yeah. yeah. When Sean did his first episode of that SOS, he did not know that it was going to equal my ugly mug on this thing. <laughs> you know, we, it's growth. It's, it's moving forward. Um, what are your what what areas so you've talked about your three pillars talk to me about how the three pillars are going to affect your community so right now aberdeen has approximately twenty nine thousand people population okay. so obviously that kind of means we're growing in that growth i want to bring 300 veterans to the community uh this is obviously the the big picture. <laughs> um, you know, veterans bring something special to the workforce. Uh, we want to, we collectively, you know, have high moral standards, high value, high dedication. Uh, if we don't know the answer, we'll either find it or learn it, you know, things like that. And those are aspects that employers want even if they don't know they want it, you know, veterans are the way to go. So that itself is going to help the community. In I'm addition ready. to that, uh, obviously, you know, more services, we have more vets in the area that maybe the VA gets better funding. We get more services for vets. We build up entrepreneurs, you know, we bring more industry to the area. We prove that this works and then we expand into the next community. You know, it, it's ultimately it, it's all about growth. It's the growth mindset. It's, you know, the, the value that vets bring. And I, I think that 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 benefits every community, not just, you know, Aberdeen, not just, you know, a small town, Minnesota, North Dakota, it doesn't matter where. Right. Yeah. I no, I, and I agree with you, right? It's um when when we lock shields and we show a community what it looks like, and we've shown I can't tell you how many times we've even said this on the show, but when we show when veterans show the, the local community what it looks like to stand together and be truly unified, there's something genuinely genuinely powerful in that, right? And I think I think we have a unique responsibility in that. I think I think veterans don't get a chance to to step out of uniform and then stop being an example. I just don't think I don't think we're afforded that opportunity. I don't think we should be afforded that opportunity. I think it's our responsibility to set an example, to be who we're supposed to be in our community and to lead our community. I think you're you're doing exactly what you need to do in Aberdeen and the surrounding areas. Um, okay, we, we've got a lot more to talk about. I think, but I want to hear more about. Um, because you've talked about credentialing, right? You've talked about building upscaling, upskilling and things like that. What, what are you looking for? You've talked about some food service industry stuff, but what else do, what else are you kind of, and some construction stuff, but what else are you kind of thinking of? What, what, are, what's your, what's your vision? What are you looking at for, for skill building? So a lot of the skill building that I want to do will, will actually be offered directly with mission rehab as we grow. Okay. Um, I can teach anybody customer service. Yes, but I need a way to teach them. Mm -hmm. So one thing that I want to offer down the road uh, as we grow is basically a way to teach customer service, a way to teach retail management. Uh, so I, if there's a way that we can do that, my thought is effectively having like a, a super gas station, you know, gas, grocery, 
maybe a small deli, vehicle repair, where we can do the skill building in house. Of, I'm not okay. going to, you're not going to be an ASC certified mechanic, but you'll get a job at Jiffy Lube and you'll do fine. You know, you're not going to be a Michelin star chef, but you'll be more than a burger flipper. You're not going to be a cat, uh, like the a restaurant tour or sorry, uh, like uh, the owner of a grocery store, but you'll be the best cashier that they have. And we can teach that. We just need the venue to do so. And, you know, and another aspect with that is with our interview process for vets, it's going to be, what do you want to do? Mm-hmm. Do you want to be a stand-up comedian? Well, we'll partner with the college. We'll get you some public speaking courses one way or another. Do you want to be a welder? Well, we'll find you an apprenticeship. You want to do construction, HVAC, trash. You know, we'll be that that central network where you come to us. And if we can't directly offer it, we will get you where you need to be to get that skill. And that, is that, there, that's, oh, sorry, go is, ahead. Is there a local vocational school or uh, any types of trade schools in the area that you can try partnering with? So we do have uh, Northern State College or Northern State University. Um, that's our closest college. I don't believe that they're very vocationally focused. Mm-hmm. But Are you any of the high schools or anything in the local area? Not really. Uh, like there's definitely like shop classes and things like that, but they're not specifically focused on vocations. So I figure even if it means that we're driving three hours, you know, to the nearest one, say in Sioux Falls or Pierre or Rapid City, we'll get you there. Uh, you know, if, if it means that you have class and it's a weekend class, we'll get a bus. We'll, we'll get like a TMP, uh, like a, whatever, whatever it takes, you know, we will, we'll do it, you know, with obviously within reason, we're not going to fly people out to California to learn, <laughs> to learn how to be a bag boy at a grocery store, but <laughs> You know, at the same time, you know, if if, if it means that you're going to build the skills that you need for success, I want to see everybody succeed. And I know that everybody isn't going to. But even if we make, you know, one one millionaire, one billionaire and they remember where they came from and they don't have to return it to me. I just want it returned to the community, to the vets. I don't care if it's in New York, California, Florida, you know, remember the struggles that you had and the trials that you went through and return it when you can pay it forward. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's my only ask. Uh, I I think it's interesting too, because I think you're bringing up something that I don't think it's talked about very often, right? Not every veteran is in, is in a Atlanta or a Jacksonville or in LA or in New York or a Chicago, right? Not every veteran is in major metropolises with a bunch of vocational schools around it and a bunch of opportunities. Veterans sometimes are in small places like Aberdeen, South Dakota. Not that there's anything. I personally, I grew up in a small town. Like there's not anything wrong with that, but we've got to remember that not every veteran has the major metropolis with all of the services around them that has all of the opportunities around them. And some of the stuff that's virtual, you don't know about it unless you hear about it. You don't hear about it unless somebody tells you about it. So having people like you in these smaller communities who are willing to step up. And like I said before, be the hands and feet, I think is vital. I really think, I think it's, it's vital because it's, it's, this is a veteran health issue, right? Veteran. This is the health of the, of the veteran community and the veteran community is everywhere. Yeah. It's not just in big cities. It's not just around military bases. It's everywhere. And I think shedding a light on that, that there are, that there are small towns with veterans who need assistance because everybody can jump on the, on the news in Atlanta and show them what a great job they're doing with veterans. Right. Aberdeen don't get a whole lot of doesn't get a whole lot of play 
on the national news. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm, I'm dude, my, my hat's off to you, dude. I'm, I'm standing up and I'm cheering for you. Um, I'm here to help. However I can, I know Sean will jump in. However we can help dude. whatever we can do. Um, let's, let's, let's go there. I want to know if you're talking to our audience, right? Now, our audience is not all, and you might be the only one that ever watches this from Aberdeen, South, South Dakota. All right. I hope not, but you might just be the only one that watches. So we, you are talking to a national audience. We could audience, be huge dude. there. Yeah, we could we could be <laughs> massive. <laughs> I, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> We're going to blow up in Aberdeen, South Dakota. Listen, man, here's what I want you to do. I want you to tell our audience. The folks that listen to us that are transitioning service members, the folks that listen to us that are with other organizations, the folks that represent other organizations or know of other organizations, I want you to tell us what does mission rehab need? How can we help? Right? What do we what do you need from us? Do you need organizational partnership? What do you what are you looking for? Floor right. is yours, brother. So on the short term, uh, we have a fundraiser coming up for our pre-Thanksgiving meal. Uh, we're calling it our first annual No Vet Goes Hungry pre-Thanksgiving meal. Food gets expensive. Yep. <laughs> so we've set a goal for $1,500, uh, which there's a GoFundMe link on, on the missionrehab.org website. So the short term for that is funds. Uh, Next is definitely partnerships. Anybody who, you know, has resources uh, for that job placement, that skill building, you know, even if it's not in Aberdeen, if, if we can get the vet to you in Atlanta, Chicago, New York, Miami, you know, I want to make sure that we're not just dropping somebody off in the middle of nowhere where they have no other connection. Right. So if you have the, the ability to take in a vet, um, to offer a skill building job placement or homeless prevention that I'm not able to do, you know, that that's one thing that I, I would say that we need and that that's altruistic, you know, that that's not mission rehab specific, that that should be everywhere. Um, we're going to need, like, we, we are new. <laughs> I yeah. just my 501c3 in September, like, literally two wow. two weeks ago. Brand new. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I need to learn this stuff. Uh, if you have knowledge, suggestions on books, people I should talk to, contacts. Peter Klein. One hundred, dude! You just ripped the name out of my mouth. Don't, you, John. Don't even worry about it. I've already written it down. His name and your name are right here. So there's a couple of folks I'm going to introduce you to. So you can listen, dude. You can count on Vet SOS for a couple of things. Okay. First of all, we're going to make a donation for your No Vet Goes Hungry. Awesome. Okay. I love what you're doing. I love it. It means a lot to me. But we're going to connect you to other people. But listen, folks, when you're watching this, when you're listening to this, I need you to reach out to John, right? We're going to get into how to get a hold of him, but I want you to reach out to John. I want you to offer. I want you to offer to assist him. I want you to offer your intelligence. I want, to, I want you to offer your experience. I want you to offer your partnership. That's what I'm looking for. I am looking at the camera, and I am telling my friends and my, my, the people who are listening, I want you to reach out to this kid, and I want you to help him. Let's get him. Let's get, let's get Mission Rehab built up. Yeah. All right. Um, That's enough of that. I'm going to stop again. We got my soapbox now. <laughs> oh, so we, we are coming down to the end. Um, amazing mission, what you're trying to accomplish there, uh, especially starting it in a very small town. Yeah. Uh, comparatively, uh, with probably very limited resources compared to what Eric has in Atlanta and in his military surroundings, and then what I have in Jacksonville. Uh, definitely a different situation. Uh, so applaud you for the efforts there and trying to get that, you know, off the ground up and running. Um, and, you know, we, we mentioned this in, in an earlier episode about we're, we're hitting that holiday season. Yeah. You know, that that's, it's a hard time for a lot of veterans and definitely a hard time for service members away from their families, you know, so whatever we can do to, to reach out and, and give a hand to, to our veteran community, especially during the holidays, 
or even more during the holidays. Uh, such a great thing. So this this effort for the pre-Thanksgiving meal is just fantastic. Absolutely love it. Um, we, we, we will help you out any way we can. I know between Eric and I, we got a, a ton of connections. And, and of course, you know, the Vet SOS family, we've brought on so many great organizations that I know they'd be more than willing to reach out and help you and work with you. Uh, so please don't don't be a stranger and don't be afraid to ask. Um, just want to thank you for sharing your story and your personal journey and uh, uh, wish you the best of luck with this as you try to help the community. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, brother. Thank you for coming on, man. Thank you for uh, spending some time with us. Thank you for doing it last minute. Uh, that's yeah. <laughs> huge for Sean. I, it's genuinely appreciated. Um, let me ask. I just want to make sure that you get an opportunity. How is it best? What is the best way? for our listening audience to connect with you personally? So for me personally, my contact information is littered all throughout the Mission Rehab website. Cool. Uh, my personal phone number is on the Contact Us page. Obviously, you can uh, fill out an email uh, you know, through that, through that page. Uh, john.ellis at missionrehab.org is my email. Um, I'm not going to verbalize my phone number. Just think. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, that's smart. We're good. We're good, buddy. I got you. We know where but, to go find it. Yeah. Social? social security number, please. Yeah, put your social. <laughs> Hold on, let me get a pen. Yeah, here's my DD214. Uh, and uh, and we're going to be working on, John and I are going to be working on this LinkedIn page because LinkedIn is going to be huge for you. So yeah. you and I are going to work on LinkedIn. We're going to get that thing built up and rocking and rolling. Um, awesome. Dude, I am, um, again, I am humbled uh <laughs> that you chose me to talk to i'm humbled that uh we get to work together um let me know how i can re how i can help dude reach out anytime you've got my number i'm not going to publicize that either um but you've got my number dude you reach out anytime you need me all right all right awesome all right everyone that comes that is the end of the show uh thanks for joining us um make sure to follow and subscribe on youtube and your favorite podcast platforms um thank you for tuning in and listening to us on the vet sos podcast and remember don't drown in a sea of transition. Grab that SOS, that vet SOS lifeline.